is, is vital. And uh, as Catherine says, uh, the willingness of governments over the last 50 years to undertake that explanation has varied. In the United Kingdom, it hasn't varied at all. It's been entirely absent. No effort of any kind has ever gone in, either in the formal education system or in the public information system, to try and explain why the European community, European Union existed, what it does, how it operates, how much money it has or hasn't got, who's responsible for paying it and who's responsible for spending it. None of those questions have ever seriously been addressed, maybe outside academia or some of the remoter regions of large commercial enterprises. Um, so uh, it's not really surprising or even a criticism in any way of the British people that they haven't got a bloody clue. Um, and that extends uh, not just in highways and byways of the so-called red wall seats, that extends into the higher reaches of political activity in Britain. I used to be in the 80s and early 90s when I was active in British politics appalled by the absence of uh, basic information, let alone further comprehension, amongst highly intelligent, well-informed, thoroughly engaged colleagues about the European community. And the shift of sentiment that we managed to secure in the Labour Party came largely from the encounters that my trade union colleagues and local government colleagues increasingly had with their counterparts in the rest of the European community. The shift barely existed, other than those who are real aficionados, anoraks, uh, inside the Labour Party. I then discovered that that was a similar situation in the Conservative Party, except that those who had been obsessed since before 1973 with trying to keep us out or get us out of the European community uh, were wielding increasing influence. And that's basically, I know superficially and very briefly, the history of understanding of our engagement in a remarkable enterprise, a community of laws that has replaced uh, conflict as the characteristic activity on this most blood-soaked continent. Um, so that's how it's been for those years. I don't think there's been a great leap forward in public comprehension since the 23rd of June 2016. Indeed, uh, whilst geographically the continent of Europe remains, or the rest of it, remains roughly the same distance away, given an inch or two, or a meter or two of erosion, as it has for since the Ice Age, there is no greater understanding.